Let's move to this story. A teenage Jehovah's Witness must have a blood transfusion to save her life despite her religious objections, according to a senior judge. The girl, who's 15, suffers sickle cell syndrome, an inherited condition that affects red blood cells and is at risk of a stroke without immediate procedures. Yesterday, the High Court was told that doctors must go ahead with the procedure because although the teenager is intelligent and able to make her own decisions, she should not be allowed to die. Lloyd Evans is a former Jehovah's Witness elder who now campaigns against religious fundamentalism. And Lloyd, nice to have you with us. I've often wondered about this. It seems to be one of those stories about the blood transfusion that sort of crops up every few years, and this seems to be the latest case. What What is the deal in the Jehovah's Witness order about blood transfusions? Afternoon to you. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. Can I, right off the bat, uh, extend sympathy to the family involved here? Um, most of what I have to say will be something that they disagree with strongly because I'm no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. But I can still remember what it's like to be a Jehovah's Witness. And I can imagine that this young girl in particular is extremely distressed at developments. Jehovah's Witnesses are uh, taught to think of this sort of thing as a version of rape. So this girl will feel as though her body has been violated um, her parents will, will obviously be distressed as well. I obviously think that the judge here has absolutely made the right decision, but I can still remember what it's like to be a Jehovah's Witness and to think that there's something somehow wrong about saving your life by accepting blood. So when you were a Jehovah's Witness, you, would you have been supporting this girl's position? Yes. Yes, Jehovah's Witnesses take very literally uh, a verse in Acts 15, 28 and 29, which manifestly is talking about abstaining from eating blood, uh, they go one step further and say, well, if it says that we shouldn't eat blood, then we shouldn't put it in our bodies in any way, shape or form, even if it's to save our life through a medical application in the case of a blood transfusion. Yeah, and in this case, it's the girl herself. This isn't, I mean, we, we've heard previously where a, a much younger child has been at the centre of something and the pet, the focus is clearly therefore on the parents. But this is a 15-year-old girl. She has her own mind. The judge said she's intelligent. She is arguing she Does doesn't she? want the blood transfusion. So we're Can talking. you have your own mind as a 15-year-old? I remember yeah. when I was a 15-year-old Jehovah's Witness. I assure you I was not in possession of my own mind. I'd had 15 years of being raised in the Jehovah's Witness religion with the assumption that any moment Armageddon would be coming and billions of people who don't share my beliefs deserve to die. That's where my mind was at 15 years old. Wow. Um, did, didn't make any of that correct or moral. Um, this young girl, unfortunately, like her parents, is indoctrinated into a very harmful group that values itself and values its own agenda over the lives and welfare of its followers. And so that's why the judge has made absolutely the right call. If you want to decline medicine as an adult, by all means do so. But when you are a child, you do not get to make that decision. It's absolutely right that the country should interject and say, no, we're going to keep you alive. And then when you're an adult, you get to decide what your beliefs are. Just, just tell us, if you could, Lloyd, what are the fundamental differences then between, you know, because it is a Christian-based um, following, I understand. So what are the fundamental differences between, you know, I don't know, C of E and Jehovah's Witness? Where to even begin? C of E don't a think that version. everyone who... <laughs> C of E don't think that everyone who doesn't share their beliefs deserve to die at Armageddon. And again, I realize many Jehovah's Witnesses who will be listening to your show will be appalled that I'm putting it that way, but that nevertheless is the, the belief. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have it like a two-tier version of Christianity, whereas most Christians think they're going to go to heaven. Jehovah's Witnesses think that only 144,000 people in the history of mankind will go to heaven, and everyone else who is deemed worthy who survives Armageddon will populate a paradise earth that's been cleansed of all unbelievers. Well, we did ask the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses onto the program. They declined the invitation while this case is ongoing. Does it surprise you they wouldn't talk? Oh, absolutely. They they won't share a, um, a show with me whatsoever because I'm an apostate and they view apostates as mentally diseased. So, 
Well, you're doomed, Lloyd. Um, we're glad you're with us though this afternoon. Thank you, Lloyd Evans, former Jehovah's Witness, and he couldn't have been uh, clearer, really, on what he feels about uh, where they have been going with their journey and what he thinks about this particular case. An extraordinary situation. Can a 15-year-old really make their own mind up? How does that pan out? What happens? Do you then have to physically hold somebody down to give them a blood transfusion if that's what the court dictates? Interesting. 0344 499 1000. It's 22-3. So that was my appearance on the Ian Collins show on talk radio literally just an hour ago. I've just hastily assembled this video so that you, my viewers, including those of you in parts of the world where perhaps talk radio isn't followed, um, I thought it might be useful for you to know what happened on the show and what I was able to say in the five minutes or so that I was given to comment on this tragic story. And it is a tragic story, and I did mean what I said about extending sympathies to this 15-year-old girl. Let's try and remember, we who are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, what it was like when we were believers and how terrified we were at the thought of someone else's blood being put in our bodies. And I think the absolute nightmare when you're a child is this very scenario of all of that happening against your will. So a blood transfusion being forced on you by worldly doctors. It's the worst nightmare, isn't it? when you're a young, believing Jehovah's Witness. So I do feel deepest sympathy to this 15-year-old girl who had this decision taken out of her hands. You do hear stories from various parts of the world. Well, first of all, this happens quite frequently, thankfully, where the court intervenes. And you hear stories indicating that this is perhaps desirable for the parents too. Because basically everyone on the JW side gets plausible deniability. The girl's not going to be dis disassociated for the offence of saving her life by receiving blood. Nothing's going to happen to the parents because the whole decision has been taken out of their hands by the judge. The judge in this case was Sir James Munby. And I was, I mean, I was obviously delighted at him making this decision, but I was also a little bit disappointed at some of the rhetoric. If you read the Daily Mail article, a link will be in the description below. It says further down, but he said the High Court should reconsider whether the girl should have greater rights to refuse medical treatment before future tran transfusions up to the age of 18 when she will be legally entitled to refuse medical treatment. It seems as though the judge is being diplomatic here. He has applied the law in this instance and said, no, I'm sorry, legally you just don't get to refuse life-saving treatment because you're a child. But he's then going on record with the media saying maybe we need to change this law. Maybe we need to make it so that children, children can refuse blood because of their religious indoctrination. And had I been pressed further on the details of this story, I would have said, well, that sort of law would come with a body count attached because you would literally be killing Jehovah's Witnesses if you allowed children like Jared Scepter, whose story I covered on this channel, if you made it possible for them to follow their Jehovah's Witness indoctrination and essentially martyr themselves. It's a very sad situation. None of this should be necessary. It's all about unfounded dogma that the organization is thrusting on Jehovah's Witnesses, coercing them into these impossible scenarios. And if you are watching this video as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I would just encourage you to watch my video 
on blood transfusions, there are logical reasons why you can be a believer in God and a believer in the Bible and also a believer that life is sacred and that you should do everything you can to keep it going. But I just wanted to share this interview with you. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but that's everything I have for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.